Celebrities are expected to enjoy a lifetime of luxury or at least survive until they are very old. But what if I told you it is not always the case and that some celebrities are currently living in deplorable conditions despite having lived the life of flamboyancy during their peak time. In this video, I will show you a list of Kenyan celebrities who went completely broke after making millions in their peak moments. Hello, my name is Chief Okuzo from Plug TV. First on our list is Congestina Achieng, a former boxing sensation who once held the title of one of Kenya's highest paid celebrities in the sports industry. Congestina not only catapulted Kenya onto the global boxing stage, but also earned recognition as one of the world's most skilled female boxers between 2003 and 2007. Just like other celebrities, Congestina had a dream of owning mansions, luxurious cars and living like royalty. However, fate took an unexpected turn for Congestina when she faced off against American boxer Yvonne Reyes. Prior to the match, there was widespread anticipation that Congestina would defeat Yvonne decisively. Nevertheless, the fight ended in a surprising point victory for Yvonne Reyes, without a knockout. Devastated by this defeat, Congestina seemingly disappeared from the public eye, leaving her fans and followers in the dark. Several months later, Congestina's son, Charlton Owino, sounded the alarm, revealing that his mother was grappling with deteriorating mental health. Charlton disclosed that Congestina Acheng had sunk into a deep depression shortly after her fateful match. But uh, according to Wasewengi, hapa inze wanasema ni as a result of boxing, wengine pia kona fashion yao ni maybe startaja, but uh, Ugonzwa ni kituwa hina kinga. Ni kama tuwa jali hina kinga. So, but what I can assure you guys, the citizens, Konje's illness was not as a, as a result of boxing. Tumekupata boxers wenga mefighter kena Mike Tyson uko maju. But, awajako wa siki yo design. So, ugonzwa tu ni kitu li come from nowhere. Kuzi unapata Konje ni misa likuwa na jelewa kikuwa ring. Alikuwa, like, alikuwa na waji protect all the time. Izo za mapanches za kichwa alikuwa akizi dodge all the time so alafu pia akiwa usia kifanywa x-ray hakuna brain damage yenye inaweza sema ilikuwa ni punch kwa ngumi kwa kichwa there's there's nothing wanapata kana tu brain iko sawa so we we fail to understand but ju ugonjwa tayari iko hapo hivyo tunasema tu like uh, maybe ni there's a time where alikuwa so lonely alikuwa na feel so lonely so left alone so akawa na depression Cause nilikuwa po hivyo yugonjo ikianza by the way. Uh, it was at one point tulikuwa kwa gym na ye. So all of a sudden, akena kwa kona gym hapo hivyo kaketi akanza kufikiri a lot. And then I was like hey mom what's up? Ni nini nafanyika? Akane matu relax. So akafikiria sana. Iyo sikuwa kutrain. Tukeishia kwa hao jioni. Ajafanya anything. Akenda kashawa. Aka relax hapo kwa kiti. Akengojia sapa. Aka kula. Akenda kudo. The following morning. That silence. So ni kama likuwa naenda itu depression pole pole without us even noticing. But mi nili notice ni vile tu nilikuwa miyang sikuweza ku kumpati hizo mawaida like uh, a mature adult would uh, personally do. So iyo even ndi ugonjo ikanza. The next day, akanza kusema vitu zenya ziko. Like maybe, someone is hallucinating. Unaji unasema mse, eh hey, kuna wasewa na kam kukuchukua. Kam tujificha pa hivi. So una get, ananza kusema hizo stuff, hizo stuff. Lakini siya tuliwa nasema nini. So, ikanza tu hivyo pole pole. So, hivyo tu kidogo kidogo waka wase nika rizalam kwa my relatives home. Aka wakakama, waka mchukua, waka mpileka madare. That was the first place she was taken. Alafu hivyo tu hiyo gonjo yika endila tu, yika spread to your design. Yika kwa tisa ni kitu hiko. So, personally, siyezi jua ni nili ya tiyo gonjo. Na pia wasewa elevi, but it was not as a result of boxing. Uh, ukiangalia pale sana wengi wanadai kwamba uh, the last time that uh, she was in the ring, alipokonywa ushindi wake na tangu apokonywa ndio akaanza kukua ni kama ana ameanza kufikiria sana could that be the, the cause oh uh, actually her last uh, match the title was the queen of africa versus the queen of the world so na wali fight mara mbili so the first fight ilisemekana ni draw 
Queen of Africa which was Conchisina Cheng, Queen of the World which, which was a Natasha Ragozina. So ilikuwa wa Germany. Walipelekana wakasema ni draw. But according to uh, people's opinion alipokonywa. Hiyo vita ilikuwa ashinde by the way. Nime watch several times Konjali Munda. So ikasemekana ika Natasha alikuwa ndaka rematch. So Konje si akakubali. Yeye ni ule mse. So wakenda rematch wakapigana only to come up with the judges wa kujana decision uh, points that Natasha ziko juu. So wakasema Konje ame lose. So I think after hiyo pindi za kunachangia juu sasa you see that all, all that effort kufika hadi hapo hivyo alafu unanyanganywa points pia ni za kwa imelidi to that kwa sasa after hapo hivyo unaenda because by the hiyo ndio ilikuwa vita yake ya mwisho after kurudi sasa Kenya huko hivi ku relax relax dogo ndio hizo stuff zikaanza sasa so i think she was eventually relocated to her hometown in Yala where she battled alcoholism while holding on to her boxing medals and spirit Congestina's dire circumstances drew the attention of numerous well-wishers including Mike Mbovi Sonko, the former governor of Nairobi. Sonko not only took Congestina to a rehabilitation center but also offered her a job opportunity within his organization. However, Sonko has faced challenges in his efforts to help Congestina, claiming that she has been disrupting his plans to revive her boxing career. In a recent statement addressing Congestina's condition, Sonko expressed his frustrations, blaming her family for hindering his efforts to provide assistance. He stated, "I have seen a post by my good friend Carol Radul on Konje, which attracted both positive and negative reactions from the public. Others were criticizing and accusing me of playing PR and VP Dire." I hereby wish to respond with facts as here under Kenyans I did my best to help Konje but her family watered down my efforts fortunately my heart is bigger than myself at times I fail to control it for the love I have for the people especially the less fortunate and I think this is the reason I initially gave Konje the first second and now maybe I will be forced to give a third and final chance again because I'm always serious with all the cases we undertake and since we always document and account for the progress of all our sensitive cases Sonko stated in part of his statement A Congestina's last appearance in the ring took place shortly after her rehabilitation where she engaged in a boxing sparring session with Fatuma Zarika Despite her challenges Kojestina expressed hope that she would make a full-time comeback to professional boxing. Number 2, Visita. In the world of Kenyan music production, Visita has long been a prominent figure. His contribution to the entertainment industry have united fans and artists alike through his captivating music. However, despite the fame and substantial income he has garnered, from his musical endeavors it appears that visitor's once thriving career has fallen prey to the clutches of poverty in a surprising turn of events in 2021 visitor found himself in a dire straits desperately reaching out to the public for assistance his financial problems had reached a critical point with mounting bills threatening to force him out of his own home due to unpaid rent arrears To make matters more complicated, Visita pointed fingers at radio presenter Willie M. Tuva, accusing him of exploiting his talents for personal gain. Visita did not mince words when expressing his discontent with Tuva, labeling him a pretender. Tuva refused to play when I re- when I released my paper first time paper came kwa kwa hewa alikataa kucheza. He never played. Na reason yake ilikuwa Reason ilikuwa the video ni chafu. Meget But on the same same show anacheza ile ngoma ya diamond na ule mama ule ile nasema nawe we wanna shake matanye manzo na shake mahaga mazi mpaka una alafu ma paper chezi ati ni chafu mimi sisi na chukia tuva simchuki na mdarau tu he voiced his displeasure with tuva's claims of him being the biggest producer in east and central africa emphasizing that some praise should not be given lightly 
Visita alleged that Tuva had taken advantage of his work, including his laughter and performance tracks, without his consent. Despite numerous attempts to communicate with Tuva, Visita felt deceived and frustrated by the situation, emphasizing his lack of respect for the radio presenter. William Tuva do to you? Me, I don't like him. I don't like Tuva. Period. What did he do to you? He's, he's a pretender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't like him. I don't like pretenders. I don't like someone who calls me and tells me you are the you are the biggest producer in Central Africa. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that if you don't mean it. You may get. And then brother went ahead. I got chukwa my laughter. You see that laughter? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And my performance track. I can register skiza. So me na pigiam tuva. The first thing I hear is me. Get, and you're not aware. I'm not aware. I call him several times and Peleka Ibi. Let me tell you, I don't like Tova. I don't. Fortunately, Visitor's plea for help did not go unanswered. Kind hearted individuals such as music producer RK and Prophet Lovi Longomba came to his rescue, providing much needed financial support to alleviate his dire circumstances. Since then, Visita has been seen on his social media platforms making efforts to stage a musical comeback. Number 3. Magic's Anger Now, Anger's rise to fame was nothing short of meteoric, dominating the entertainment landscape from 2016 to 2021. Collaborating with top-tier artists like Calligraph Jones and Arrow Boy solidified his reputation. However, as his stardom soared, Enga found himself entangled in a relentless pursuit of social media attention. One pivotal moment that thrust him into the global spotlight occurred in 2020 when Enga issued a copyright infringement notice to American rapper Tekashi. Enga took issues with Tekashi's hit song Guba, claiming it contained samples of his work. He warned, don't sample my beats biggest song, Delete by Magic's Anger. Now, this move prompted a swift counterclaim from Tekashi's team. Shockingly, within hours of Anger's claim, Tekashi's music video was back on YouTube, amassing over 200 million views. Now, the victorious rapper gloated on Instagram stating, LMA, or rather, loving my ass out. I know you are dead mad right now. In response, Enga retaliated by posting a video on Twitter labeling the American rapper as stupid. This spot, however, was just the beginning of Enga's troubles. A further rift emerged when Enga clashed with Harmonize over his song Uno, alleging that the beat had also been sampled. Gradually, netizens began branding Enga as a chronic clout chaser, especially when he claimed to have joined the Illuminati only later to confess that it was a fabricated story. He also opened up about his struggles with drug abuse, expressing a desire to quit alcoholism and marijuana. Unfortunately, Enga's situation took a dark turn when he was captured in a deplorable state in the coastal region. He attributed his condition to an encounter with strange spirits in the area, claiming he had been battling inner demons. Now, desperate for support, Enga resorted to social media appealing for financial assistance from well wishers. Via his social media Instagram page, he outlined the challenges he faced in the music industry, citing unfulfilled expectations from various collaborations and the closure of his recording studio due to rent issues. Enga went to a step further, reaching out to Kenyan President William Ruto for aid in salvaging his music career. However, his fellow celebrities distanced themselves from his plight, asserting that Enga's pride in drug abuse had caused his downfall. Notably, fellow music producer Motif refused to offer financial assistance, citing past grievances with Enga and labeling him as too proud to accept help. Uh, maybe what one I expect come away uh, fellow producer on a fuck party support pay financially probably. Says him say dear Julian to see Sana Vanza like same as you in a fanini. So Nezam say dear Nezam Lain of course says you buy na Joaquin Bureau M say but me ni ko willing kum say dear. I get a cat come uh to find willing like you know come up on a kiburi. 
Ah, ya alikuwa na kiburi sana akiongea about mimi. But mimi niko willing kumsaidia. Akitaka tufanye kazi, kwa studio, collaboration, mimi sina shida. Yeah. Do you feel maybe it's a punishment of whatever is going through because maybe akiburi hivi? Ah, sasa man punishment because ujini anapitia. So I hope sasa wishe ni one kitu bye ni. Yeah, so I hope to kwetu sawa. Number 4. Edu Maddox. The former Boondocks gang member Maddox has become a prominent figure in the headlines but not for the reasons he would have ever hoped for. Now, despite once amassing considerable wealth through his music career, Maddox seems to have fallen on hard times. In stark contrast to his former teammates Odiwa Muranga and X-Ray, his troubles appears to be closely tied to issues of substance abuse. While talking on why their group broke up, Edu Maddox claimed that X-Ray and Odi Wamuranga had chosen to pursue solo projects, leaving him grappling with the challenge of keeping the Boondocks gang brand afloat. However, a glance at the current status of the group's members reveals that X-Ray and Odi are thriving in their respective solo careers, seemingly unaffected by the split. This stands in a stark contrast to Maddox, who has recently blamed his former comrades for deserting him. Disturbing footages has emerged showing Maddox in a visibly altered state due to substance use, struggling to articulate coherent thoughts. While those around him express deep concerns for his well-being, some have even resorted to offering prayers in hopes for his recovery. <laughs> Yeah. Rafa mkali alikuwa rafa wa Bulldox mwenyewe du Maddox lakini ambaye kumwendea kwa kumwendea Mungu atakuwa kitu sana lakini X-ray na Omene Rick ya X-ray na na Odiwa na Omene Rick mlitoroka uja mara lakini ambaye atakuwa kitu sana ona ona ni mafanzo wote wa X-ray na Odiwa Moranga hivi kana juja Check 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 na uh, una jana lipa u uh, uniji unajua uh, ame ame ni mimi ni pedo ngapi sasa so, basi ya data ona baadhi ona baadhi toka mama ka kumzuri ona baadhi ona ini ni ini jaba life ni soft life ni soft kuna nguri alafu unajua check kila siku kila siku Rapper breeder LW visibly moved by Maddox's distressing situation took to Instagram to express his disbelief saying bad things happen to good people Maddox was a good dude with a pure heart it is hard to believe that life has taken such a turn for him Following this story of this artist who went broke, most of them, the reason why they are broke up to now, it is because of substance abuse. Others may be a lack of uh, saving or, or rather investing. Where? Anyway, what are your thoughts? Leave your thoughts in our comment section. That is it for now. Thanks for watching. Let's see you next time. Bye-bye.